Greetings, everybody. Nick DiVirgilio here, and I'm hanging out with the one and only Klaus Hessler. My pleasure. My man. I consider you to be one of the experts in the world of technique, how to hold the sticks, foot technique as well, but mainly hands here. Can you speak to what technique is, especially for a new and up-and-coming player? I think it's pretty relevant to translate the word technique before we start out uh, doing this. Okay. And uh, let me say technique is a streamlined concept for motion, the most comfortable, the most efficient, the most flawless strategy for organizing your movements. That, I guess, to me, is technique. And when I say technique, I'm, I think it's important to not mix it up with coordination. So technique, to me, addresses all these finer thingies. What is it exactly that my hands and fingers and wrists are doing and what are the, the certain components of a, of a motion. That is what I look at at technique. But one other, I think, very overlooked thing, when you watch somebody play, you always see a mix between technique that has been acquired and fine-tuned over the years and a natural gift for movement, depending on your very personal and individual an anatomy, if you will. Okay. What I learned is that there are people out there who have an extreme ability to move a certain object, in our case a stick, in a very fast way. But that is not always the result of acquired technique. This is uh, why I often, if I were to break it down into one sentence, I would say, not everything that stinks is cheese. Not every person <laughs> that is playing very fast necessarily, have, necessarily has a sort of acquired, streamlined technique. It, you may just see the natural ability of more muscles that have the potential to move fast and to have fast reflexes. So uh, They've learned to use what they have to work with correctly. at a certain level. And, uh, and we all have that. Every person, every player is different. And uh, what you see, again, I think is always a mix between natural ability and uh, acquired, fine-tuned technique. And what we are speaking about today is exactly that. We are speaking about certain aspects of, okay, what are the options to hold a stick and uh, which are the positions that you usually look into and what are the, the different avenues that you can travel on when it comes to, uh, to playing this beautiful instrument. So where would you start if you had a new student coming in? This is how I hold this. Klaus, teacher, this is how I hold my sticks. Would you start with the how, exactly how they're holding them or, or kind of build on what they already have? I mean, building on what they have is always important because, uh, I mean, you, you need to go with what's there. You, you need to think with your brain. You need to work with your abilities, not with the abilities that you would like to have. You work with your tools. You work with what is there. Okay. And I'm the, the biggest fan of starting as simple as you can. So if somebody asks me uh, about a very general advice about how to hold the stick, what I often say is, throw the stick and catch it. You just throw it and catch it. And when you do that, what comes out oftentimes is something like that. No one catches a stick like so. No one does that. And how often are we taught, yeah, it's index, index finger and thumb and that's your fulcrum. Honestly, I'm almost tired of that. <laughs> but throwing a stick and catching it to some degree and then just trying to see what that does for you automatically takes you towards that kind of little finger hold, flesh grip, molar grip, if you will, that may work for a very large of, of, your, of your core business behind the drums. So that is something that I do. Another thing is, um, and that's even before I move into things like free stroke and understanding all of these elaborate labelings and understanding how to tell molar from free stroke and, and anything in between, understanding the importance of rebound by just having the stick in your fist. I'm going to give you an example. Please do. Which is um, super easy. So I'm, I'm really doing that. I, imagine, I was, imagine I was riding a bike. And I'm not thinking towards aspects like angle, oh, it needs to be that much of an angle, or this is too... The angle is going to be slightly different for each of us. Okay. I hold this like I would hold a hammer. 
And, uh, and now, just imagine I'm doing this. What would you say am I doing? Playing a double stroke roll? Yes. And uh, would you say my fingers are working for that? Doesn't look like your fingers are working, doing anything. Would you say my wrists are working? No, it looks like your forearms are doing all the work. The forearm is working and the stick is working. Right. Okay, so, which is quite an interesting thing because that double stroke roll wouldn't sound as bad as you would think. Especially when you say, okay, no fingers, no wrist, just arm. How is that? And in terms of grip, I'm doing anything wrong, which there is to be made wrong if you were to look into schooled methodology of stick technique. Right. Is it? And there's even one interesting extension that we may want to try. <laughs> so what would you think is happening if I just let go of the stick or I release the tension in my hand a tiny little bit? What would you say is most likely to happen? Like the stick becomes freer in your hand. Very good. The stick becomes freer in my hand, right? I, I'll do it for you and, uh, and, and you'll see what it is, okay? So here's my double stroke roll. And now I'm going to, uh, uh, to loosen the, 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 the tension in my hand a tiny little bit. And this is what happens. So now I'm playing what? Flams. Flams, hand-to-hand -hand flams, right? And if I tighten my fist again, I get this, but what you notice is my motions still look kind of the same. So this and this, and still without following all these things like, okay, the fulcrum needs to be, and it should be, and, and still, I mean, if you were to close your eyes and, and look at the flams, not look at, but yeah, hear, hear them, listen yeah. to the flams. <laughs> N nice and even, right? So I would be totally curious how you deal with that. Okay. And imagine, imagine you, you, you stick to some sort of a, a pulse, so you right. tap your foot and quarters, and you had, say, one measure of, of where you do this, and then one measure. Oh, that, that's tough. I immediately want to start getting loose with my wrist when I loosen up the stick. Absolutely. N number one is you need to be ready to produce BS here. I, I didn't want to say bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you need to be ready to make mistakes. So, so yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah. it's not going to work. But uh, the, the strange thing in the beginning is really applying that forearm motion and, and really seeing what's happening. I, I, my left wrist wants to keep doing this. Yeah, I, I was just saying, like your, your right arm does it, your left is more coming from the wrist. Right, right. I'd have to kind of just concentrate on my arm. And, and you know what? Oftentimes, this is like some of, the after, uh, some of the aftermath that comes from here. Because as you're, as you're trying to keep this baby not conflicting with that, oftentimes we have some sort of censorship in, in our motion mm -hmm. brain that tries to keep our left hand down and, and use less of our left arm. It's just That's a, that open-handed playing thing you're talking about right there. It is. It, it, is. it keeps reappearing. Okay, your <laughs> turn, my friend. <laughs> oh, man, I don't, it's really... Yeah. And, and, and... But now I'm not doing it. Not, I'm not doing it. <laughs> I can tell I'm not doing it. Yeah. Yeah, right? I have to like, yeah, it seems like two totally separate things to and, me. And, and really, the, the only thing that I'm doing, and I'm not sure if the camera picks this up, but the only thing that I'm doing is, I'm, if this is my position on the double stroke, right. this is my position on the flam. <laughs> it's like this, <laughs> it's, it's this much It's like yeah. the change from here to here. Yeah. That, that's all I do. Wow, okay. Well, I can't, it's hard to kind of just feel this motion. True. It's a very humbling thing. Even something Isn't as it? simple as this. Yeah. Why can't I do it? That's, that's the first kind of 
probably obstacle I would have to get out of my brain. Yeah, and uh, and it, um, I, I was speaking about open-minded drumming in the in the first video already. There, there's a there's a full course on basic hand technique, which which offers like a wealth of exercises that go down this avenue in that style, which comes with more PDF stuff and elaborate exercise and all of that. But but that's kind of an interesting takeaway and a, an, a very overlooked thing, uh, and it, it all comes down to. I think being aware of the amount of tension inside your hand is way more important than looking into different aspects of fulcrum. That's also important, but understanding that this works great, but this sucks <laughs> because it's just too tight. This, the stick will not be able to react as much as if you were to hold it like that, but still, I mean, the points of contact in my hand are the very same, but as the hand is too tight, I'm killing the rebound. Sure. And rebound is like, that's like the holy grail of drumming. This sure. is that one source of energy you need to be in control of, no matter what sort of technique you'd like to follow or to streamline. Because you want the stick to do some of the work for you, don't you? I mean, absolutely. The, the stick should work for you. And uh, my first really important mentor by the name of James Forbes Chapin, he used to say in, in, his, in his teachings, give the stick a wish of its own. And I have no better words than to just say that. Give the stick a wish of its own. But this is not going to happen if you're holding the stick too tight. And if you're holding the stick too tight, I don't care no matter how you hold the stick, it's, it's not going to work. The tension is deciding on everything. But you need to be aware of where and how the tension comes into the game. And taking everything out, what you know about grip and fulcrum, and just reducing it to that, really breaks it down to only being aware of the tension inside your hand. How would I break myself of the habit of doing this with my, my left hand? Or is it something I would even want to? I mean, number one is, watching yourself in the mirror. So practicing technique without a mirror is like learning to fly without a plane. I think it's not, hap it's, it's not happening. Because uh, when you sit in front of the mirror, you have the option of actually teaching yourself. And when you, and when you really focus on certain points of your body and you compare your right side against your left side and vice versa, and you say, okay, what's my, What's my right stick doing? Is, he, is it like bouncing back to here and your left is, on, is only going to here? Maybe as you just sit behind your pad, you will not notice the, 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 the misconception. So uh, watching yourself in the mirror and, uh, and trying to balance right and left, trying to balance the height of your shoulders, the position of your elbows, the way your stick bounces back, the degree of how much forearm am I using right and how much forearm am I using left? How much wrist am I using right and left? What's the position of my hand right and left? And I'm trying to balance all of that. This is the most, the single most important thing I'd say. Watching yourself and, and then streamlining things from there. Klaus, thank you so much. I have something to work on tonight for sure. Hearing what you said coming from you, a person who's really studied this in a, in a good nuanced way, again, even from someone who's been playing for 40 years, I really, I could see that there is something I could do better. And I appreciate that because there's always something we could learn. Doesn't matter how, how long we've been playing this instrument or any instrument for that matter. So thank you for that. If you want to learn more about that, it also connects nicely what we just discussed to the to the history of drumming. Still to the very day, the Swiss tradition of drumming is handled like that from the right hand. The French tradition of rudimental drumming is exactly handled like that, with the stick in the fist. So uh, Mola technique is not working without the use of your forearm. And this exercise also just nicely brought the arm activity into the game. So you may want to try I mean, stuff that, uh, that I put out in Daily Drum Set Workout, which has a couple of, of real cool hand training exercises. Also, just like Camp Duty Update, which focuses more on the historic side of things, but still gives you musical examples of how this all leads down to, to the use of these elements in a rudimental setting. So this is where streams really come together. Beautiful. Well, thank you so much for being here and showing me this stuff and showing the folks out there your drumming. It's awesome. Thank you. It's my Thank pleasure. You, I enjoy it. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you again next time. Yep. Bye.